All right, a um, little, so little bit of a recap because we should do this last week, but um, hey. it's worth mentioning now. Good it's here. Metro M4 Express. Y'all wanted it. We previewed it a while ago. We made a couple. We made like 100. Uh, they sold out. If you didn't get one, uh, sign up because we're going to be making more and we even are going to make it better and better. Um, many improvements, many more MOSFETs. Um, this features the SAMD51 Cortex M4 chip which has DSP floating point unit, cool peripherals like camera input. We're actually looking yeah. at a camera module maybe that will stock, that will go with um, the M4 boards. Uh, just blazingly fast, 120 megahertz, um, single core, but it's you know the reliable cor ARM Cortex processor you know and love. Comes with uh, 512K of flash, 192K of RAM. Uh, perfect for running CircuitPython, but of course can also run Arduino or if you want to just ARM GCC it up, go for it. Yep. And, uh, of course, um, this is our MOSFET tribute board. And in um, Discord, people now have the little MOSFET thing. And as someone just mentioned in the chat, CircuitPython flies on the M4. It does. It really. F this is the board that we're really targeting for CircuitPython. So you could definitely run on the M0. It absolutely works. But if you want to feel comfortable Same. and be like, hey, a tons of memory, and I'm like having a good yeah. time with my garbage collector, M4. Okay. Next up. Um, we have, yeah, this is a connector. It's a jack. Yeah. No, it's a jack, but it's connected to, this is a speed controller uh, potentiometer, like a foot pedal. But instead of having a switch in it, which is what we have stopped so far, um, this one has a potentiometer. So some people have asked for this because they're like, hey, you know, I like that you have these foot switches, but I want something where I can control the speed of something or how bright something is or... You know, all sorts of and we, any kind of control where you want to have something more than on and off. Um, so this has a, a potentiometer rheostat in it. I can show this off. Okay. The Go the other end. Yeah, why not? Okay. The other end. So. I'm gonna this try this here. green screening of the. Yeah, the you can try it. So yeah, this right. is really um, high. You gotta move the green screen over a little bit because it. Oh. No, other way. Other way, sorry. sorry. Otherwise, reality. I'm, I'm disappearing. <laughs> okay, there you go. Let's okay. see how this works. Well, that's a very wide range. Yeah. Um, Put so the foot yeah. switch on top of me. Yeah, sorry. Fitting. Sorry. Hey, look. No, you should. No, I'm not saying you should because I don't need to be here. Okay, great. Bob. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, this foot switch, um, it's, you can use it with 15 volts, 3 milliamps. Uh, inside is a wipe wiper that when you press, it wipes it. Um, along a, a resistive uh, material. And you can, uh, it, the, what's nice about these is it has just a plain uh, mono 3.5 millimeter uh, DC plug that is like super easy to connect to with almost anything. And uh, normally it's about uh, 20 uh, kilo ohms. And then yeah, as you press it, the resistance goes down. That's at like 10K, 7K, 6K, all the way down to, uh, this one goes down to 250 ohms. Uh, sometimes they go down to about like a one kilo ohm or so. They, they do vary a little bit, but they're always open at uh, 20 uh, kilo ohms. So um, really nice durable switch. Uh, I like this one. Um, a lot of the ones that are low cost have a very low resistance value um, because they're meant to go in line with the mains power. What's nice about this is it's meant for low voltages. So you can use it without having to worry about like, oh my God, it's ranging from like, one ohm to two ohms or there's like a coil inside uh that you know is acting like a variac or something no don't have to worry about that much simpler uh to use just a resistor okay there's a wheels yeah we are um getting into more robotic stuff because you know we thought it's, it's about time. time it's time sorry i'm just putting stuff we, away we waited to contribute positively in robotics with great high quality low cost stuff so this is one of our wheels do you want to show both? Well, let's start with, yeah, I think let's, show, let's talk about both and I'll show them both. Okay. Where's so the other is, one? There's an orange one. This one's like chunky and it has a silicone um, cover and it's orange. And this one looks like kind of cool and like cyberific. Um, there are a couple other colors. This one looks the best, the orange and clear. Mm. And then we also have this thinner, slightly heavier one. It's, it's white. And what's nice about this one is it has those holes that if you have a reflective sensor, you could you could probably use this as a very basic um, rotation counter so you can you know, make sure it's rotating or not. 
not going to be gray code, uh, but so you don't want to know direction it's moving, but you'll know it's moving or not. So that could that could be pretty okay. handy. Want to show some of these? Yeah. So I have right. this um, wired up to our uh, motor, and let me plug in um, this uh, thin white wheel to start. What I like about this wheel is it's it's kind of hefty, but that means it's very true. Um, you know, it doesn't wobble a lot. You can see it moving. It's moving fast enough that the camera is just like a little confused. I can slow it down. Um, just snaps right on, nice and skinny. Compare that with this wheel, it's thicker. But this one's also kind of nice. I, I like this kind of like tready um, grippiness. Um, so you have a couple options. We also have a thinner wheel in the stock already. So this, this is like thin and then this is kind of also thin but not as thin and this is like chunky. So let's look at the chunky wheel. And yeah, there's this, you just have to get it onto the oval cutout. Hold on. There you go. And it just uh, snaps right on. Yeah. Same sort of thing. It's just a wheel, but it's a it's a easy, simple, low cost wheel. You just plug on and works great. Great for making um, moving robots, or if you want to like spin some paper or something, or yeah. grip onto something and move it around. So these are the okay. two wheels that we've added. All right. Next up, we also have this hub. This was actually for other wheels, but the other wheels weren't that great. But this hub is kind of nice. So this is a snap-on hub, and it's just like the inner part of a wheel that will snap onto this motor and let you attach other stuff. You see those two big mounting uh, holes? It makes it really easy to um, mount stuff on. So I can show this off, too. It's yeah. pretty this simple. It looks like. But yeah, this video is, is very clear about what it does. Real right. face. Um, so yeah, we uh, you can just snap this on, and it really clicks in place. And then yeah, it's nice and solid. And you've got two mounting holes. So maybe if you want to connect um, some other materials, plastic, wood, uh, cardboard, and you want to have a good, uh, you don't want to use a wheel. You want to use something that you can uh, have a screw go through. Um, this will work a lot better. So okay. those are the three motor attachments that we have. Yeah. And uh, we also have this. And you're like, wow, I wish I had a motor to attach these two. Well, you're in luck. We have um, a uh, low cost, but a pretty good quality DC geared motor. Um, these are very popular. They're sometimes called TT motors. I think the original company that designed them was called uh, TT motor. And so um, these are really common. But we got um, a really nice, a particularly nice variant of this. Like they're all, they're made by multiple different companies. Um, this one is fairly quiet, um, dependable. You can run it from three to five volts, uh, up to 200 RPM, up to about, uh, I think, 100, 150 milliamp uh, run, and then uh, up to an amp when it's uh, uh, stalled. Uh, so you'll want to use it, you'll have to use a motor controller with this. Um, we have a TB6612, those are good. I actually recommend the DRV8833 breakouts we have because they have uh, current limiting in them. And so if you current limit these to like 200, 300 milliamps, uh, you'll be like totally golden. Um, but here is the 130 um, size motor. And then you get two um, it's a standard 0.1 inch plugs. You can plug into a breadboard or you can plug into a terminal block. They're very useful. And then, um, Nice long wires. Phil uh, gave me this wire length. It's the distance between our hearts, you can tell. Uh, also about eight, eight inches, if you want to. Turns, turns out. And um, there's also um, strain relief here, so you can don't have to worry about this uh, coming off. And then we have one that's taken apart. So you can see the gears. Um, so this one is a fully plastic geared um, kit. Uh, we are looking at having a motor, uh, a metal geared kit for this motor, um, but you know what? Honestly, the plastic gears are fine, and it, and it makes it fairly inexpensive. So for a couple dollars, you can get um, a nice uh, geared motor, and this one is, is fairly quiet and smooth. Like I said, I like this one a lot. Okay. And yeah, you, we have now a bunch of wheels that go with it, and we'll add more accessories that go with these. I've been looking high and low for all sorts of like cool stuff that you can add onto these motors. 
uh, to attach different things. It can maybe a Lego connector um, or uh, you know, uh, pinwheels or, or paddle wheels or pulleys. So um, we'll also maybe 3D printing up some stuff that attaches to this connector because it's a, it's a very simple, okay. but you have to have something that just fits in, snaps in just right. And start of the show, besides you and our community, is? Eyes. Eyes. I just do eyes. We have had this bonnet for a while. This is a Raspberry Pi bonnet that allows you to add uh, two animated eyes um, to a Raspberry Pi. And for a long time, we were like, well, you know, we've got these kind of low cost, basic TFTs, or we have these really expensive OLEDs, but the OLEDs were not as like, well, they're expensive and the resolution wasn't that great. A couple weeks ago, we added 1.54 inch, uh, really high quality TFTs with um, high angle visibility, 240 by 240 pixels, so like very high resolution. The, um, the dark is dark. It, no, they're really good quality. It, it's weird to see it in person because it looks a little too real. Yeah, the black is, is yeah. I mean, it's really good at... Put it on the overhead? Yeah, we'll see. Let's see. overhead at times. So how weird this, this is going to go. Okay, so, right, yeah. so this is the eyes. Well, oh, because some green. of them are green, yeah. So, um, um, so yeah, these... Um, these are with that uh, really nice TFT, so you can see even if the angle, you know, varies, uh, you you don't get that much variation in the look. So you have a lot more um, angle visibility, about 80 degrees in every de direction, um, before the color changes. You never get the inversion; you just get you know the colors just shift a little bit. Yeah. And um, they're nice and skinny, and because these are 240 by uh, 240, um, the resolution is is four times as good, uh, four times as many pixels. Do you really need a Pi 3? Uh, that's the one thing that we did notice. To, to, we were using OpenGL to render them and then like copying them using Python to the buffer. Basically, in the end, it, it really does require quite a bit of processing power um, to get these eyes rendered. Uh, of course, you can customize the eyes if you like, but uh, we recommend getting a Pi 3. So this pack, you get two of these really nice IPS displays, um, the connectors, the headers. You just do a little bit of soldering and um, your next robot animatronic project uh, thing to yeah. keep people off your desk. Do you uh, remember what yeah. TFT stands for? Someone asked. Someone said uh, maybe thin, thin film, film transistor. transistor. Yeah, yeah, thin film okay. transistor. That's the thing that switches the uh, light on and off. Okay. Well, with that, Lady Ada, that was new products. Thank you. Yeah.